What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Milari. So here I am with Paul from South. We're going to do a quick preview of the Giants game today. The Vikings-Giants play 430, first game of the playoffs for the Giants. Wild card weekend, super wild card weekend, that is. How you doing, Paul? Can't wait for 430, but doing good, thanks. Ready for the Giants today, obviously. Going to do a quick preview of the Giants game. Let's talk about the Bills-Dolphins. We can start with that. It's halftime in this game right now for the Bills-Dolphins. Dolphins are only down 20-17 to at half, and I've liked what I've seen from them. Yeah, without a couple of drops there, they'd probably be ahead. Some of those field goals they got early would have been touchdowns. But Hill and Waddle drop balls. Both teams are getting a tremendous pass rush. It seems to be the key to the success moving the ball. Everyone, I mean, it seems like Buffalo's blitzing almost every play, and they're getting home. Uh, but Thompson has uh, held his own. And again, without those drops, they, they probably have the lead. Yeah, Skylar Thompson's playing pretty hot. I like what I've seen from him. He really has been out to dry, left out to dry with a couple of those drops by Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill. He's thrown some dimes, especially early in the first quarter when they were down 17 to nothing. Then the Dolphins went on a run, got a couple of picks of, of Josh Allen, two picks and five pass attempts at one point for Josh Allen. He only had one pick in his first five playoff games. And now he has two in one had game. Had two in one game, two in the one first half. half. Yeah, but it's a long game, and, and the Dolphins found themselves down 17 nothing. then went on a 17-0 run, tied it up 17-17, scored 17 points over a seven-minute interval at the end of the first half. Then the Bills got a field goal right at halftime to take a 20-17 to lead. But I've liked what I've seen out of, out of Skylar Thompson. I love what I've seen out of Mike McDaniel playing very aggressive, going for two. That works. Getting the interceptions, going for it on fourth down, throwing a Hail Mary right there on the 25-yard after a touchback with only four seconds after halftime. He's a great coach. Got a lot of confidence in his team. I like that. Me too. No, I love what I've seen out of him. And I think the Bills, I just think they might have taken the Dolphins lightly. Everyone did. Skylar Thompson, everyone took lightly. And my prediction yesterday, I said it would probably be like a – 21-17 game at halftime, 14-17 game is what I thought at halftime. I thought that if the Dolphins could keep that as a score, that would be a win. And look at them now, that's 2017. So I'm rooting for the Dolphins. Hopefully they get a win. I think Buffalo has been overrated all season. I've said that a few times. I think they're a good team, but I don't think they're the Chiefs. So I, I, I know everyone talks you know, about them like they are the Chiefs. But You know, you know divisional games are usually close, and uh, Miami's overcome, you know, uh, no time in the pocket for Thompson. Third string quarterback, drops. rookie quarterback, and, and they're right there. I think they got a real good chance to win, especially if they stay close. I think they can pull it out. The pressure's all on the Bills because everyone thought the Dolphins had no shot. So the Dolphins right. are playing with house money, and I said this yesterday a million times. You're playing with house money, and you're playing with no fear, like the Dolphins are right now, going for it on fourth down, getting two gritty interceptions, going for it on going for a two point conversion, yeah. throwing a hail mary at halftime on the twenty five yard line, trying to just air it out just to see what happens. Yeah, right. They're gritty. Yeah, they're gritty. Yep, they're gritty. that way as a big underdog anyway. But they had a great fourth down conversion at Jeff yeah. Wilson. It was fourth and ten and on a dump off check down. Great and effort on third down conversions. Choke hitting Hill on like a third and They've been 17. playing great. Yeah. Hill yeah. had a great great play on that up the sidelines. Left part of the sidelines. Got himself a first down on it. And they got out of bounds. So that's a quick preview of the second half of that Bills-Dolphins game. As I said, Bills are up 20-17. to 17. Now we're going to preview the Giants game. 4.30 today. Giants going to Minnesota. The Giants... Have had no luck in Minnesota the last four times we played the Minnesota Vikings. Really haven't had any luck. The Giants have had lost at Minnesota three straight times they played at Minnesota. 2015, 2016, in this season in 2022. We've lost four straight games to the Vikings. But this one matters more than any of the other four since the other four were all regular season games. So the Giants going into Minnesota today. Everyone's healthy. This is the first time the Giants have had a clear injury report. Adoree Jackson's back. Xavier McKinney's back. Two big pieces in that secondary that were not there when the Giants first played them in December on December 24th on Christmas Eve. And if you look at this Giants team, with everyone fully healthy, I mean, they have a very good roster talent-wise. They have a lot of talent. For a team that's rebuilding, there's a lot of talent on the team, especially on the team considering they're 9-7-1. and one, No one thought they had a shot to be where they are right now. And they're winning while rebuilding, which just shows Joe Shane, Brian Dable have done great with rebuilding while winning at the same time. But what have you seen out of the Giants overall in the year? Just a quick line about that, then we'll get into a preview of the game and what you want to see. I think Martindale's going to gonna bring the heat like he did all year, and Cousins is a guy that you can rattle. I mean, it's going to come down to who has more time in the pocket. You know, if, if, the, if the Vikings, uh, you know, rush gets to Jones or if Martindale's blitzes get to Cousins, I think that's going to be the story of the game. The Giants, are gonna, again, they're going to play more aggressive. I, I know they're going to blitz more. Minnesota's got a 31st-ranked passing defense. Yep. Jones first. had a real good game like three weeks ago there on Christmas Eve, like you said. Again, but they better not sleep on Barkley because I think they can, they'll can. they set up the deep ball with the run with Barkley. Definitely. And the Giants, the last time they played them, the Giants really threw the ball 
Heavily, Daniel Jones had a very good game, 30 of 42 passing with a touchdown, a pick, 334 yards, which was his I second most yeah, in a single so game this season. A 92.8 passer rating in that game. And also had four carries to 34 yards. I'd like to see Daniel Jones run today a little more. He averaged seven and a half carries per game on the year. Hopefully see him get six or seven scrambles on some options with Saquon Barkley. And Saquon was good that game, 14 of 84 carries-wise, 14 carries, 84 yards, and a touchdown. Had a long of 27 and also added eight receptions of 49 yards in that game. So whatever way you can get Saquon Barkley the ball in open space, that makes a huge difference. I think that's always important to get Saquon the ball. He needs a lot of touches, but I think they're going to have some design plays call for Daniel Jones to run. I mean, I think I've seen a couple of naked bootlegs the last couple games where they might fake Saquon to the right. Daniel puts it on his hip and runs to the left. He's got great wheels, and any time like there's like a third and five or something like that, I think that's a great call to let Jones keep it. And the Giants coming up with a lot of momentum last week, playing the Philadelphia Eagles in a game that meant nothing for the Giants. The Giants benched all their starters. Davis Webb is a starter quarterback for the Giants, making his NFL debut basically as a starter. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at what he did in that game, played very well, 23 of 40 passing with 168 passing yards and a touchdown. Had a 75.8 passer rating. Do you know what the passer rating was? Or quarterback rating, 75.8 quarterback rating, excuse me. And Daniel Jones in that game on Christmas Eve, I said passer rating. He had a 92.8 quarterback rating in that game. But if you look at what Davis Webb did last week, he had a 75.8 QBR. Jalen Hurts had a 65.5, like 10 points less on his QBR last week than Davis Webb. Webb played very well, also added six carries of 41 yards and a touchdown. Two total touchdowns in his, in his NFL debut. And if you look at it, no fumbles, no interceptions. He played the ball... Very carefully. He's only played two games in his NFL career. Played in a game in 2021 for the Buffalo Bills. Probably just took a couple of knees. Didn't throw a pass. Last week was his first start in first game he actually played in. And played pretty well. I know the Giants lost. But that's a lot of momentum going into the Vikings this weekend. When you didn't play any of your starters last week. Everyone was sitting. Your second and third stringers played the entire game. And they stayed close with the Philadelphia Eagles team that was playing for everything because they wanted to win the first seed. Jalen Hurts was playing. Miles Sanders was playing. A.J. Brown was playing. J- Darius Slay was playing. James Bradbury was playing. Devontae Smith was playing. Everyone on that Eagles team. Jason Kelsey. I can keep naming guys. Fletcher Cox. Brandon Graham. Everyone played. Hassan Reddick. Everyone played that game for the Eagles. And the Giants were right there with them. I think the Giants got a lot of confidence, just like you said, from that game. Um, they know they can stay with you know the highest seeds in the conference. And I think Kenny Galladay, the Vikings better not sleep on. I mean, one play like that, a great catch in yep. crunch time, could give this team a lot of confidence throwing the ball to Galladay. I, I think that Dayball's got to come up uh, with some more targets and with Kafka for Galladay today. He's a big-time receiver when he's on. He's six foot four, I think. 6'4", yeah. He's a big receiver. And look at the catch last week. I think he can definitely build on that. With some momentum, he's going to become a great target today. The Giants were down in that game, 19 to nothing at one point at the 6-17 mark in the third quarter. They were down 19 to nothing, held Philadelphia to four field goals in the game, or five field goals. Philadelphia only got one touchdown, a Boston Scott eight-yard rushing touchdown, which he has 10 touchdowns against the Giants in eight games. Against the Giants. He, he, he has a bullseye. I mean, he puts a bullseye in the Giants' back. He, Every time. He tears us up. But the Giants in the second half outscored Philadelphia 16 to 6. And they went on a 19 or 16 to 3 run at one point. The Giants are down 19 to nothing, only losing the game 22 to 16. Got a two point conversion, uh, or went for a two point conversion after Davis Webb had a rushing touchdown, 14 yard rushing touchdown, missed it, still a 19 to 9 game. Had he gotten that, it could have been a 22 to 18 game. The Giants only would have lost by four. Uh, but at the end of the day, obviously, a loss, a loss. But I still think it's impressive, though, with what the Giants did in that game, scoring 16 points. Against the Philadelphia Eagles team that led the league in sacks at 70 sacks on the year, almost set a franchise record. The Giants played very well considering they had backups playing. And for some of the guys that were playing for the Giants that could even get snaps today, Kenny Galladay, like you just pointed out, had his first touchdown as a Giant in the last game of the regular season of his second season in New York. Signed a four year, $72 million deal in March of 2021. Took him till his last regular season game of his second season to catch a touchdown. And it was a great catch. Great catch. No, he's a big Contested time guy. Darius, yeah, yeah. he's a great. You look like it was one arm falling down in the end zone on Two the sidelines. Yeah. I mean, uh, he, he was a big time guy in Detroit. Obviously, with some injuries over here since he's been a giant, he hasn't fulfilled his uh, potential, but that catch could motivate him. We know he has the tools to do it. Um, he, he was a big time guy, so I would expect he's going to come up in his first playoff game with the Giants pretty big today. And Brian Dable went right over to him after that catch, went right over to him on the sidelines and even hugged him. So I think it, he obviously knows it's an emotional play for Kenny Galladay. And I love Galladay's celebration. Didn't celebrate at all. Was just locked in, 
just high-fived everyone really lightly, kept his head down. He's just ready to go. Two catches, 30 yards, and a touchdown. 25-yard touchdown pass from Davis Webb, which was Davis Webb's first touchdown pass of his career. Webb played pretty well, and Gary Brightwell played very well. 11 carries to 60 yards and a 25-yard rush was as long on the day. Also added a catch for three yards. And then his returns-wise, two returns of 64 yards, including a 40-yard return at one point. So he's a Spock, and I think Gary Brightwell today is going to have a big play for the Giants. I know me and you both are big fans of him. Yeah, I, I, I've been feeling a big return out of him. Like the one in Philly last week was a big one, but imagine if he breaks one today and takes it to the house. What a turning point in the game that, that could be. Definitely. And the Giants offensive line played pretty well considering they're playing against uh, Philadelphia Eagles who had 70 sacks on the year. The Giants didn't give up a sack last week. Zero sacks allowed. Webb was pressured 28.6% of his dropbacks and was hit seven times and also had five hurries with 12 pressures. But considering how good that pass rush is for Philadelphia, the Giants weren't sacked at all last week. Considering, and that just considering it was all backup offensive linemen against the Philadelphia Eagles starting defense that had everything to play for because they, they want the one seed in the NFC. The Giants played terrific, and then the Giants' defense played well, too. They got three sacks of Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts was 20 of 35 passing, 229 yards. Did have a couple bad plays as well. I think he finished with one interception, did he throw, right? Or he threw two interceptions, and they came back, right? They came back on some bad penalties. Uh, he did throw one pick, though. The Giants did get a pick from Dane Belton. Belton did drop another pick as well. Hurts had a 65.1 quarterback rating in that game. As I said, Davis Webb was a 75.8. So, I'm only just breaking that down because it just shows the Giants of momentum going from last week to this week, letting everyone know that even if their backups are playing, they're still going to be a competitive team. And one guy in the defense that could get himself some snaps today is former 2017 first-round pick, 21st overall from the Detroit Lions, Jared Davis. Giants picked him up off the Detroit Lions practice squad. He fell out of the rotation in Detroit with the new regime of Dan Campbell. Fell off the map there, comes to the Giants and played very well last week, got a half a sack. Had 11 combined tackles and a tackle for a loss with a quarterback hit. Six solo tackles in that game. So Lawrence Cage is another guy to watch out for in that Giants offense as well. So the defense, watch out for Jared Davis. I think he could buy himself some snaps today with how well he played last week. Kenny Galladay could buy himself some snaps considering he had a great catch last week, and that's momentum. And then Gary Brightwell as well, 11 carries, 60 yards last week. But Lawrence Cage, our backup tight end, is throwing at Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is throwing to him in the red zone right now in pregame warmups. Was very good last week. Eight catches, 69 yards. Yeah, I don't remember any drops either. I don't think he so. showed good hands. I don't think he had any drops either. He played very well. So we'll see how that Giants game goes. As for today, the Giants are playing the Vikings, so they lost to a Christmas Eve. Lost that game, a very close one, 27-24. The Giants gave up a 61-yard field goal to Greg Joseph as time expired, which was a career long for Joseph. Uh, but the Giants tied the game 24-24 with a Saquon Barkley 27-yard rushing touchdown and also got a two-point uh, pass attempt that was successful for the Giants to tie the game at 24 with two minutes to go. Giants still end up losing that game, but they got momentum in that game considering Jones threw for 334 yards, had a passing touchdown, also ran the ball pretty effectively, four carries for 34 yards. Saquon looked pretty good in that game, and the Giants receivers, Richie James and Isaiah Hodgins, were great in that game. James was 8 for 90, and Hodgins was 8 of 89 and a touchdown. Hodgins had a long of 29. Richie James had a long of 33. Darius Slayton even had a long of 32 at four catches for 79 yards. So the Giants are going to have to move the ball today and pass. And that Eagles, sec or the Vikings secondary, excuse me, is not good at all. Not good at all. 31st in defensive pass yards allowed per game, 65 pass yards per game. Rushing yards allowed, they're 20th in the NFL with 123 allowed per game. And the Giants love to run the ball, 148 rush yards per game on average, which is fourth best in the NFL. But I want to see Daniel Jones throw the ball today, and I know you do too. Oh, yeah, you can throw in this Minnesota secondary. I mean, I think you're going to set up the, you know, the deep ball with Saquon. So hopefully if Jones gets time, I think the Giants could go for 30 points today. And here we are, just a quick... Breakdown of what just happened in Miami. Dolphins strip sack of Josh Allen out of halftime. Return for a touchdown. The Miami Dolphins are leading 24-20 to in Buffalo right out of the half. Wow. Right out of halftime, winning 24-20. to you can't quit in these games. That's a 24-3 to run for Miami. Considering what we saw last night, 27 to nothing. Jacksonville was down. They went on a 31-3 to run and won the game. Frisco was down at the half, too, yesterday and unloaded in the second half. So, yeah, anything could happen. You can't quit. The most dangerous team is a team that's playing with house money and has nothing to fear. And that Dolphins team is playing with zero fear right now. That's what I love out of Mike McDaniel. I love what I've seen out of Skyler Thompson. Standing in the pocket, getting killed, but getting rid of the ball. And that defense in Miami is not letting up. They've read everything all week. 
that Miami has no shot in this game. No two attack of Aloha, no, te- no Teddy Bridgewater. They got no shot in this game is what they read all week, and they're ready to play. The defense came ready to play. The offense came ready to play. Besides Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill dropping some passes, they've been playing great. I love that coach. He's, he's, he's got them in the game. He's got swagger, too, with that, the sunglasses. I love those. I like, I like him. I do, too. Great coach. Uh, one guy the Giants have to watch out for is – or they, they, the Vikings have a good offense, but one main guy you have to watch out for is Justin Jefferson – who terrorized the Giants in that game on Christmas Eve. 12 catches for 133 yards and a touchdown on 16 targets. TJ Hawkinson was another threat. 13 catches, 109 yards, and two touchdowns in that game. Now the Giants do have a Dory Jackson back, so Dory Jackson will be covering Justin Jefferson, I'd imagine. And then you also have Xavier McKinney back in the defensive backfield, and who knows what he'll be doing if he'll be covering a guy like TJ Hawkinson or be roaming the field deep, which I know Julian Love and him both have either covered guys or roamed the field. They've done both, but I think Xavier McKinney would be more of the freelance guy maybe Julian Love would cover TJ Hawkinson in this game but the Giants last year they played Kansas City in the regular season Julian Love locked up Travis Kelsey the whole game and eliminated him basically from it uh, Kelsey didn't really have that great of a game when the Giants played in the regular season in 2022 or 2021 it was the last regular season so maybe the Giants mix it up today go solo coverage there with Julian Love or Linda Collins is now st- getting a lot of reps at linebacker. He's not really a great cover guy, so I wouldn't imagine he would be covering a guy with TJ Hawkinson. But what, what do you think the recipe is for the Giants today on defense? Pressure Cousins and try to lock up Jefferson with the Dory Jackson? It's all about pressure. And, and I, as I said earlier, Martindale's going to blitz a lot. If you think about it, Jefferson had 11 catches and Hawkinson had about, what, 12? Yeah. That's like 23 catches. That's almost what they throw for in a game. So they have to find a way to lock those guys up and don't let them kill you. So uh, I think... McKinney's the guy they probably will send in on blitzes because he got more speed, and I, I think Love will be back in coverage a lot. And I think Love's improved every year he's been with the Giants. So um, it's important to try to keep those guys in check. Don't let them go for the big play, and try to get out of there on third down. And hopefully they get some interceptions out of Kirk Cousins. And that was one thing the Giants when they played against Kirk Cousins last game. Cousins was thirty four forty eight passing two hundred ninety nine yards and three touchdowns. Was sacked four times in the game. The Giants led in sacks four to three over Minnesota. But Cousins had some passes that could have been picked in that game. And I think maybe one or two of them might have come back off penalties. I think we might have had an interception or two, if I remember right. Or I could be thinking of the Philly game last week. I know there were a couple games where the Giants have had picks that come back based on penalties. But I do know Cousins had some pass in that game that should have been picked. And the Giants just really couldn't get anything going. But Cousins had six bad throws in that game, which was a 12.8% bad throw percentage. And was pressured on 28.8% of snaps uh, of dropbacks in that game. Jones was only pressured on 20.4% of dropbacks uh, in that game against the Vikings on December 24th. So hopefully the Giants can get something going on offense. Jones had a very efficient game, as I said, 334 yards. Hopefully let him throw the ball and hopefully maybe mix it up. Run some options with Saquon Barkley. Let Daniel Jones get in some open space and find guys like Richie James, Darius Slayton, Isaiah Hodgins in the open field. Because the Giants played pretty well against that Vikings defense, considering the Vikings defense gave up. 28 points it was to the Patriots, I believe, a team that really couldn't move the ball all season. Right, they did. They scored 28 on Thanksgiving night, right? That's what it was, yeah, Thanksgiving night. Let me see. I'll make sure I get the score right. It was 33-26, to 26. so 26 points uh, for Mac Jones and the Patriots, and the, they allowed 409 yards to the Patriots offense. So wow. the Giants have to move the ball, and Mac had 364 passing yards in that game. Yeah. So the Giants have to move the ball in this game. And obviously, like you said, Kenny Galladay could buy himself some more snaps. Considering how great of a catch that was, that was one of the most electric moments of the season as a Giants fan. I loved that moment. I was so psyched. He's a big-time guy when he's on. I mean, he's had some injuries here, and maybe he was in the doghouse last year with the previous uh, coaching staff. But um, I'm thinking Galladay's going to have a big big part in the, in the Giants' success today. And another thing about this Giants team is that no matter what happens in this game today, Brian Dable, Joe Shane being able to rebuild while – Winning at the same time, doing both at the same time is very impressive. And no matter what happens in this game, the Giants are already a season or two ahead of schedule. Because they came in with no cap space, two top draft picks, five and seven, taking Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau with great picks. Talk about Kayvon Thibodeau for a second. Uh, We'll get to him in just a second. But considering the Giants came into this season with not high expectations, only me and you really thought nine wins and maybe be a playoff team. I mean, they're years ahead of schedule. I think one or two years ahead of schedule right now being a playoff team. Because usually you want to be a playoff team by year two or three of a new regime. Yeah, and we're already there. Year one, first playoff berth since 2016. The last time we won a playoff game was a 2011 Super Bowl run where the Giants won the Super Bowl in 2012 with the Patriots, the 2011 regular season. But that's the last time we were in the playoffs. And this team's more exciting than that 2016 team, I would say. I agree. I, I, I think Dable, he, he's certainly in the running for coach of the year. 
and Shane for uh, GM or executive of the executive year. Of the year yeah. And I think they're going to have a lot of cap space going into they next. Are. Yeah, I, I heard they got like, million. like, yeah. So the Giants, the Giants are in a fast rebuild um, with potential to, you know, win their first playoff game in like uh, 10 years, whatever. So very optimistic. Me too. I'm psyched to see what happens in that game today for the Giants. As to that Buffalo Bills game, just want to give you a quick recap of what's happening there now. Miami got another stop. They have the ball in their own 20-yard line now, up 24-20 to 20 with 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. I think one guy should deserve some coach of the year talk now is Mike McDaniel, yeah, considering absolutely. they're in this game. I obviously know they've won on stretches the whole year where they lost three in a row, won three in a row, or they lost three in a row, won three in a row, won five in a row, lost five in a row. They went to stretches the entire season like that where they won three, lost three, won five, lost five. But they won last week. They had to get in. Obviously, it was an ugly game, 96 win over the Jets. But they're in it this week. They're up 24 to 20 over the Bills, and they're playing with guts. Yeah, and remember, when they were healthy with Tua, they beat the Buffalo Bills like early in the season. And then when they went to Buffalo late in the season, I think Tua did play then as well, but it was a snowstorm. And they, uh, they had the lead late, and they lost by a field goal. So they certainly know each other. And, and you got to give the Dolphins a lot of credit for hanging in there, especially down 17 nothing to start the game. And that's the thing with the Dolphins. I mean, they won their first three games of the year, then lost three, then won five in a row, then lost five in a row. So they've been on streaks all year. Then they won their last game, Week 17, over the Jets to get into the playoffs. So week 18 to get into the playoffs, getting that win over the Jets. 11-6 to six it was. It wasn't 9-6. It was 11-6. to six, Got a safety, uh, I believe, at the end, if I remember right. But that's a good win there for the Dolphins team last week. I know it was an ugly win, but just winning and making the playoffs, some momentum, you're 9-8, and eight, and now you're playing the Buffalo Bills and leading – in the second half already with 11 minutes to go. It's a gutsy team for that Dolphins squad, and I'm happy to see what I've seen out of them and Mike McDaniel. So we'll go back to the Giants just for one second. Kayvon Thibodeau, fifth overall pick in this past year's draft out of Oregon, has gotten quite the pass rush for the Giants over the last few games, giving them a spark in the defensive front there with Aziz Ojalari, Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Jihad Ward, all of those guys have been playing great. What do you want to see out of that pass rush today? You want to see them obviously get to Kirk Cousins, but who's one guy that you want to single out and has to have the best game for that defensive line? Is it Thibodeau? I think it's Thibodeau with his physical ability. I mean, you can't really block him one-on-one. He can beat you as an edge rusher. I think he can bull rush you too. And as the year has um, gone on, he seems to have gotten better. He's getting home um, with yes. that, especially since that Washington game that kind of solidified up a, a playoff. Uh, playoff chances. Yeah. Right. Um, I think Thibodeau's going to be the one that's going to have a big game today. Hopefully another strip sack. And that strip sack of Taylor Heineke, that Sunday night football game, and he recovered it for a touchdown. I think that was a turning point in the season. That was like a wow, we, we made it. We could do this. That was a wow, we could do this moment. And hopefully we get to see that again today. So we'll see what happens in this Giants game. We're both excited. I don't know. Do you want to do a score prediction or do you want to not want to jinx it? No, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not going to be afraid to jinx it. I'm going to, I'm going to switch the numbers around. How about 27-24, this time Giants? Okay, I like that. I forget what my prediction was with Mike Curley, the sports guru, yesterday. I said the Giants have to keep the Vikings under 30 points since the Giants have only scored 30 points once this season. The Vikings' offense is pretty good. They move the ball very well, but they do have a minus three, plus minus uh, point differential, yeah. which is actually the worst for a 13-win team in NFL history. Considering their offense can move the ball, the Giants, I think, want to probably keep them under 30 points since the Giants only scored 30 points once a season. The Vikings on the year averaging 24.9 points per game, which is eighth best in the NFL, giving up their 25.1 points per game, which is 28th in the NFL. They like to throw the ball, 263 passing yards per game, which is sixth best in the NFL. Their run game isn't that great, though, 97 yards per game, which is 27th in the NFL. Do have Dalvin Cook, who's a good back. But I think the Giants have to keep them under 30 points. I think the Giants want to win this game. they got to make it like a 27-24 to 24 game, like you said. But just for the sake of it, I'm going to give the Giants 30 points. I'm going to go 31, New York, 27, Vikings. Giants getting the win. I'll take it. I'll take it. And hopefully a big game out of Saquon Baca and Daniel Jones. No one deserves to be here more than those two guys, considering what they've gone through over the last – Two years, all the negative criticism and hate thrown towards them. And you were a bust pick at six overall for Daniel Jones. And you were a bust pick at two overall by Saquon Barkley. Both of those guys being drafted second and sixth overall, I would do all day. I would do that all day, all over again. I would take Daniel Jones sixth in 2019. I would take Saquon Barkley second in 2018 all over again. And credit to Dave Gettleman for getting both those guys. He did struggle in free agency. And he obviously had his misses, which every executive and general manager does. But considering those two guys and the most important players on that Giants team, they're both playing very well. And you also look at other guys that they brought in in that get in regime. Adoree Jackson was a free agent signing. Leonard Williams had gone to trade, then paid him. They got Aziz Ojalari in the second round, Xavier McKinney in the second round. They got a lot of those pieces. Darius Slayton, Julian Love. They got a lot of those pieces in that get era, a lot of those guys we have now. And if you look at that team, a lot of those guys were get guys. Andrew Thomas. 
Collins? Landon Collins we had in the Gettleman era. Gettleman didn't want to re-sign him, though, right, but we and let him go. Back. And we got him back. Got a pick six. And he did get a pick six two weeks ago against the – who were we playing in that game? The Colts. Colts. Colts, yeah. Pick six against the Colts. And that was one of the best games for the Giants on the season. So we'll see what happens in this game. No matter what happens with the Giants, are light years ahead of schedule. We both want to see the Giants back next season with Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley as their quarterback. Absolutely. Got to keep them both home. Yes. Anyways, thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it, and hope you guys have a good one. Enjoy Super Wild Card Week and the rest of the games. Go Dolphins, go Giants. Absolutely. Good luck. Go G-Men. Thank you for coming on, Paul. Much appreciated, as always, and looking forward to having you on again soon. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Can't wait for the, the game. Thank you so much again, as always. A pleasure having you come on and talk all sports, and we'll be back on again soon to talk some BC hockey, BC basketball. Thank you, Paul. Have a good one, and go Giants. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your weekend.